Because not all capital is bad. Capital is needed for a society to have abundance, to prosper. But the problem is the greedy capital. That's where the problem is. My question is about the entering of capital in Bharat. What are some of the things that I as an individual can learn from the cycle of capital having entered, for example, in the past into China and now pulling out of there? leaving behind devastation, destruction, a lot of despair also, I feel. What capital does is it erodes the fabric of a society and it erodes it most of all by attacking the family, the family unit. So when greedy capital starts to enter into an area of the world. Money gets injected into the family unit and, and exactly that's what happens, the light goes out, you know. So what happens is it attacks at different layers of the life of that geography. At the family level, what it does is it starts injecting money into the family and wherever there is an abundance of money and the desires are encouraged through advertising, people will start to go more towards feeding their desires than going with the truth of their system and the interest of the family. So the family starts to split up and break up. That's one of the first things that happens. People get jobs outside the family, they become financially independent, the ego grows, the desires want to be fed, so they separate from the family unit because there they would be under control, they would not be able to give in to their desires so easily. That's the first thing, that's the most um, dangerous thing that happens and it starts right at the beginning, very soon after greedy capital has entered anywhere. And this applies to all over the world, it applies to America itself. Greedy capital doesn't have a nationality. It can be from anywhere. The individual is only seen as a, as a consumer and nothing more than that. So obviously, that will be the first thing. The individual will be trained to desire and consume. The moment the joint families are broken up, the next thing that happens is the individual families are broken up because individuals consume more than families do. So even the nuclear family will gradually break over a period of time because the single is a more interesting consumer than if that single is in a partnership and has children. Then the money is distributed so it doesn't go to capital but it goes to the consumer consuming the basic things it needs for survival. So it is in the interest of greedy capital to maintain the population as singles rather than to encourage family. Then greedy capital starts to sell things to people that, they, that harm them. One of the biggest, uh, the most harmful thing you can imagine or think of is sugar. It underlies most of what greedy capital is trying to push down the throats of a population. So that is one area in the emotional, in the food area, in that chakra that gets overtaken. And then, of course, in the conceptual, there is the entire projection of all the desires that need to be fulfilled, which comes through advertising in the conceptual. And this, this is how greedy capital takes over. And then what happens is, is that it, once the society has broken down into single entities, it starts to suck out from the single entities as much as it can. So all the singles, I'll give an example of Zurich. As greedy capital started to take hold of Swiss society, which was from the 40s onwards, the society started to crumble slowly but surely. By the time the 70s came, 
the idea of marriage was not that accepted anymore. By the time the 80s came, the idea of children was not anymore in fashion. By the time the 90s came, you had yuppie partnerships, and now you have, you know, large numbers of the population just refusing to have children, and, and all the focus is on consuming and feeding desires, which would be fine, but what you're consuming is harming you. So what you have then is a society that is gradually more depressed, because there is nothing to live for except to fulfill desires. And at one point, after you've fulfilled so many desires, you, you know that there's nothing more you can do to fill the void which has been created by the lack of family, the lack of the, the nuclear family, the lack of partnerships. A lot of people are singles because they don't want to be in partnerships because if you're in a partnership, you can't give in to, to your desires as much. So this starts to become then a society which starts to lose its, its raison d'être, its reason for existence, which would be to propagate itself. Like in Italy now, there is a zero birth rate. So a society which is not uh, propagating itself into the next generation will actually crumble. And with it will crumble its culture, its language, its religious leanings, its entire story crumbles into the past. So it is a self-destructing model, actually. And if a culture does not want to self-destruct, and I think Sanatani culture should be careful about self-destruction, because if Sanatani culture self-destructs, then the idea of freedom disappears, freedom of spiritual choice, because then you have basically the founder religions and you have the religion of greedy capital and that leads to a lot of suffering and misery. So it is in the interest of the population here, firstly, to hold on to family, even though family can be quite challenging, to realize that if you're breaking up the family into nuclear families, you're already on a slippery slide. And if that happens, at least that the, that the nuclear family attempts to maintain its sanity, and it maintains that by being extremely careful about what is consumed. It's better not to buy than to buy. It's better not to take it than to take it. <coughs> it's better not to eat those sweets. The sugar is, is one of the biggest enemies. It underlies everything in the food area and it mesmerizes people and it pulls them in and then it swallows them. And not to be fooled by the jobs that capital dangles, because those jobs are here today, they'll be gone tomorrow, like has happened with China. I mean, China is in trouble economically now, because they are moving out of China and they are moving into India. They're going to do the same thing here, it's not any different. In another 30 years, 35, 40 years at the max, India will become an enemy and then it takes the same route as China and Europe and America itself. So, the danger faced by the Indian subcontinent is the danger of consumption. Don't be fooled by the advertising. Most of it is a lie. Don't be fooled by the corporate jobs. They are prisons most of the time. Certainly you need a job to feed your family, but try to find means that keep you free of the corporate world. Find your own little niche and do something there. And more than anything else, if the Sanatani can train himself or herself to move inward and to go with the truth, they don't have to make decisions about what to consume and what not to consume, because that is decided for them by the truth itself. You don't have to uh, think too much about it. You 
take your, your ability to discern and you discern. Before you buy something, you ask the question, is this the right thing for me to do? And you know if it's the ahankar, the loud noise of the ahankar, or if it is the truth. And then you go with the truth rather than with the ahankar or the ego. These are the things that can be undertaken, but the dangers are very, very palpable, and greedy capital is very powerful. Greedy capital, it takes something to stand up against it. Basically, the big key is to say, no, I don't want to buy this. First, say no. Just no to everything. And once in a while, give in a little bit to buying something here or there. That's it. It's, it's, that's where the, the whole thing starts, you know. So if you don't need so many things, then you're also not going to become a victim of the corporate world, of the multinationals, you know, of the tech giants who are more dangerous than any nuclear weapon to this world. One can defend oneself in that one just refuses to consume more than is minimally necessary to live. That's the, that's the trick. You know, in India, in Bharat, people have traditionally saved at least a fifth of their income in gold. So India has the largest private reserves of gold in the world. It's more than the entire world put together. Private reserves, not government owned. It's a very big strength, that power to, to keep aside something because you don't use it all up for consuming. So it's a different approach. It's a way of welcoming capital, but standing up against greedy capital. Because not all capital is bad. Capital is needed for a society to have abundance, to prosper. But the problem is the greedy capital. That's where the problem is. And if, if India is smart and careful, then one can have the advantages of capital without the disadvantages of greedy capital. And that, that's the, the tight rope that has to be walked now. Because you can't say no to capital. When it's coming, it comes. It decides to come, it comes. You know. They tried to keep it out for some time, for some decades, but now it's in you know, with a vengeance. If each time, each person in this country, or actually anywhere in the world, ask the question before they consume something. It's that simple. Is it really something for me to consume? And if they realize the difference when it's the ego and when it's the truth and they go with the truth, literally the battle is won. And it's not that difficult to do. And nobody can put you in jail for that. I remember about 15 years ago, I came to India and I was watching TV and I saw an ad, a commercial, and it was of women sitting in a village and they were sitting with their legs crossed. And one of the women had, uh, had cracks on her feet and all the women in the sabha were looking at her feet and, and going, oh, look at her feet. And they were selling a cream to put on the feet, to soften the feet. And this was like unbelievable because suddenly, say 500 million women started to get worried about the cracks on their feet, which are not even really cracks, but just rough feet, which till then was not at all something which was part of their psyche, you know. And since then they've been selling the foot creams very well. So this was a wake-up call and, and people can defend themselves that way. And it's really worth defending oneself. There are, of course, a many other aspects to all of this. This is just a sort of a, you know, a first step. Yes. Uh, there's a, another question, so I'll take his question and then come back to you. 